Okay, good evening class. Um, thank you so much for joining today's class. Uh, we are going to be looking at uh, chapter 5, which talks about the act of ensuring integrity. The act of ensuring integrity. And um, we are going to be looking at uh, the types of integrity controls. We'll be looking at digital signatures. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, certificates and then database integrity. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Now, hashing is a tool that ensures data integrity by taking binary data, which is a message, and producing a fixed length of presentation called the hash value or message digest. Now, if you've been following the class, you would understand that when we are talking about integrity, we are looking at the fact that we have data that is not compromised. Okay, so how do you have data and make sure that it is not compromised? Either by adding or reduction. So the hashing algorithm um, has to do with producing a particular key, um, key value. All right, to measure the data that you already have. And then if that particular data is altered, the value of that hash is going to change, okay? So hashing is one way mathematical function that is relatively easy to compute, but significantly harder to revert, all right? Grinding coffee beans is a good analogy of one of a one-way function. It is easy to grind coffee beans, but it's almost impossible to put all the tiny pieces back together to reveal the original things. So a cryptographic hash function has the following properties. The input can be of any length. The output has a fixed length. The hash function is one way and is not reversible. Two different um two different input values will always result in different uh, hash. Okay. Now, also, there are many modern hashing algorithms widely used, one of which is called the MD5 algorithm, or the message digest file. Now, this is a very common um, algorithm and uh, is used in most network devices. Okay, The hash algorithm developed by the reverse and produces 128-bit hash value. So the, the longer the, the bit length, the, the stronger the security. The second algorithm is the SHA. All right, we have the MD5, the second one is the SHA, which is the secure hash algorithm. All right? It was developed by the US National Institute of Standard and Technology. All right, and it can implement 24 bits, 256 bits, 384, and 504. So you see that the SHA has has um, a more secure bit value than the MD5. Salting is used to make hashing more secure. If two users have the same password, they will also have the same password hashes. So in salt, uh, a salt which is a random string of character is an additional input to the password before hash. Alright, so this creates different hash results for two passwords as shown in this particular figure. So the salt is salting is like you want to perform hash, but there is the salt and then the password. The salt is just like the encryption, the code, alright, and then the password. The, you put them together and produce a hash value. All right. For instance, here you have um, you have the, the the password, and then you have the salt. You combine them, you hash them together, and it gives you this particular hash value. All right. So the HMAC strengthens hash algorithm by using an additional secret key as input to the hash function. So the use of HMAC goes uh, a step further um, than just integrity assurance by adding authentication. Okay, so what we are saying is that apart from the secret key, you have your message, 
Then you have your data or your data length, you put them together, and then you put in a fixed length authenticated hash value, and then with the hash function, it gives you how this particular um, uh, hash value that has been calculated. Okay. Now, how about digital signatures? Digital signatures provide same functionalities as handwritten signatures for electronic documents. So, in your, in your physical document, your handwritten signature is what, what you write that is only, um, how do I put it? It's only, it's only you that have that pattern of signature. All right. So, a digital signature is used to determine if someone edits a document after the user signs it. So, a digital signature is a mathematical method used to check the authenticity and integrity of a message. All right? So, digital documents or software. So, in many countries, digital signatures have the same legal importance as a manually signed document. So, digital signatures also provide um, reputation, right? So, we are saying that the concept of digital signature, remember that we are looking at data integrity and we looked at the hash value. And we saw that in the hash value, uh, it calculates a particular function, it runs a particular function and brings out a particular value. So, if there is any change in the document, the value is going to change. Okay. Now, in digital signature, we are saying that um, uh, you apply this to show that that particular document is not altered without the original owner's knowledge. So, if I have a document and I signed it physically, for anybody to alter that document, I need to resign it. So, the concept of digital signature is also to see that we do that for digital documents. So, uh, <clears throat> Asymmetric cryptography is the basis for digital signature. So a public key algorithm like the RSA generates two keys, one private and the other public. The keys are mathematically uh, related, all right? So the third one is certificates, all right? We have looked at hash value. We have looked at digital signatures. The third way to ensure data integrity is certificates. And a digital certificate is equivalent to an electronic passport. Okay, a digital certificate enables users, hosts, and organizations to exchange information securely over the internet. All right, so you have it mostly on your websites, web browsers, and things like that. A digital certificate authenticates and verifies that users sending a message are who they claim to be. So a digital certificate can also provide confidentiality for the receiver with the means to encrypt the reply. So most of the times when you have email services and you, you need a digital certificate so that you can be able to enhance communication or when you want to access a particular site or when you access a particular resource digitally or online. Okay, so you need that certificate. Now, um, digital certificates must follow a standard structure so that they the, that any entity can read and understand it regardless of the issuer. All right. So the X509 is the standard for construction a digital construction of a digital certificate and public key infrastructure. All right. And used to manage digital certificates. So the PKI public key infrastructure is the policies, rules, and procedures required to create, manage, distribute, use, store, and revoke digital certificates. All right? So that is the concept of this. So where do we use it? You have it in maybe version number. You have it in like serial number, certificate as the uh, algorithm or the fire, issue one name, Validity period, subject name, subject public key, issuer unique identifier, subject unique identifier, extensions, uh, CS digital signatures, and so on and so forth. Okay. So those are the three we have looked at. Now, the fourth one that we're looking at when it comes to data integrity is database integrity enforcement. 
Now, database is, is basically the, the, the location where you house your data. Okay, you have your data, your records. You have your records are being housed in the database. Now, the integrity of the database is like the integrity, how sure are we that the records in that particular storehouse is not being altered? So database provide an efficient way to store, receive, retrieve, and analyze data. So as collect data collection increases and data becomes more sensitive, it is important for cybersecurity professionals to protect the growing number of databases. So data integrity refers to the accuracy, consistency, and reliability of data stored in a database. So there are four rules that uh, you need to follow. The first is entity integrity. The entity rule says all rules must have a unique identifier called the primary key. Okay, so in a database, the primary key is um is just one um field or one one record or data that is unique to only the only that record in the entire database. For instance, if I am managing students' database, my primary key can be the matriculation number because the matriculation number is unique to every student in the entire database. If I am managing staff records, uh, uh, I could use the staff file number as a primary key because that file number is unique to every staff in that particular organization. So if I am managing the database of a telecom company, I could use their phone number as a primary key because it can be, it is what can be unique to all of them. If I'm managing the database of a bank, for instance, then I am going to use the, the bank account number as the primary key. So the entity integrity has to say, it's just a rule that says, okay, every database must have a unique identifier. Okay, that is uh, the first rule. The second rule is the domain integrity. That says all data stored in a column must follow the same format and definition. Now, when we are talking about the column, we are saying that you, see, you have a record in a database. You have multiple records. And records are usually like the row, you know, that goes horizontally like that. Then um, the columns are what we call the fields, all right, that goes um, vertically. The columns are the fields that go vertically. So a record um, is when you pick an entire row. So if you pick that entire row, it has different columns, okay? The column for name, column for address, column for phone number, column for, you know, um, file number, column for, and things like that continuously. Now, we are, we are saying in the domain integrity that for every column, the information must tally. In other words, if this column says phone number, then I expect to see phone numbers only in that entire column. I should not be seeing home address in the column for phone number, like what you see here. So if this is a column, this is an ID. So you see, I will not see anything apart from ID. This is another column here, company. This is another column, names, the first name. So I should not see like phone numbers or something like that here. That is <coughs> the domain rule. So the next rule is the referential integrity. So table relationships must maintain, uh, must remain consistent. Therefore, a user cannot delete a record which is related to one other uh, record. So, uh, tables, database, like we said, is made up of um, different, different tables. Okay, in a database, there are different tables. And so, um, this each of these tables have a relationship with other tables. Okay, each of these tables have relationship with other tables. And so, um, uh, it's, it's part of the rule that, for instance, uh, let's say Nigeria has a database for bank, bank, um, bank user, uh, user account details, BVN. Thank you very much. That's the word I'm looking for. So, we have a database for BVN. And in that database for BVN, they're using an entity 
or primary key of your BVN number, all right? And then it carries your financial information on your various banks. Road safety has a database of driver's licenses, okay? Um, who else again? Let's say uh, 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 NIM has a database of um, um, ID cards. So there is a way you can relate the tables, all right, or the databases such that if I pick my account number, all right, and in my account number, there is a column for, uh, let's say, driver's license number. So if I put my driver's license number from my driver's license number, I can link to the database of, of um, uh, Federal Road Safety, all right? Or I can have different tables in my database, and I'll call them relational, so that from one column, I can be able, from one uh, record, I can be able to reach other tables to give me other information. So one of the rules is that every database must be able to have a relational or referential uh, uh, relationship. So the last one is the user defined integrity, which is a set of rules defined by a user, which cannot belong to one of the other categories. For example, a customer places a new order, the user first checks to see if this is a new customer. If it is, the customer, the user adds the new customer in the customer table. All right? Now, database validation. So a validation rule checks that data falls within the parameters defined by the database designer. So a validation rule helps to ensure the completeness, accuracy, and the consistency of data. So the criteria used in validation rule includes the size of the record, the format, the consistency, the range, the check digits, right? So these are some of the validation rules that uh, are being used. Now, what are the requirements? First one is maintaining proper filing is critical in maintaining the trustworthiness and usefulness of data in the database. So your filing method has to be very, 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 very straight and clean. The second requirement is that tables, records, fields, and data within each field makes up a database. All right. So you can have a table that has to do with student record, all right? And the record is the details of each particular um, person in that student's table. Then the fields are like the columns, maybe the name, the phone number, the address, and things like that. In order to maintain the integrity of database filing system, users must follow certain rules, okay? And it's these rules and policies that can keep us in check. So entity, entity integrity is an integrity rule. It states that every table must have a primary key. We have talked about that. So null in a database signifies missing or unknown uh, values, right? So you see, for instance, in this particular table, the database, you see you have the part ID, the quantity, the cost, description. This is like for maybe a particular stock, all right? And then this is for uh, the customers. This is the table for inventory. This is the table for customers. So you could see that this particular customer, Smith, has placed an order of this particular item, all right? So this particular item is having a table here, a different table. So there is a relationship between this particular item in this table and this particular item here, all right? So another important integrity check is the referential integrity weakness with the foreign keys. The foreign key in one table references a primary key in the second table. So this is a primary key here in this particular table, meaning that every item has its own ID, okay? And so when you purchase the particular item, you can have it here. Okay, so domain integrity ensures that all 
all the data items in the column fall within the defined set of value values. Okay, we have to discuss um, that. But let me just add one or two things. It says limiting the values assigned to an instance or of that column enforces domain integrity. Okay, so domain integrity enforcement can be as simple as choosing the correct data type, length, and or format of the column. So we are saying here that. If you are designing, if you are managing, if you are managing a database, cyber security is important because if somebody who has a malicious intention gets to get the whole of this particular database, the structure, the format, the thing, the person can alter this and it can cause a lot of uh, harm. So, uh, in chap this first chapter, we looked at the hashing algorithm. We looked at the password uh, sorting, and then we looked at the HMNC, all right? The hash message authentication code, hash message authentication code. So we looked at these tools provide a way for cyber security specialists to verify the authenticity of messages and documents. So the chapter concludes with a discussion of database integrity and password. Having a well-controlled and well-defined data integrity system increases the stability, performance, and maintainability of the data base. Right. So, um, I think that is that about that for this class. Uh, we don't have a lab activity for it today, uh, but we we'll look at it for.